What happened when the defense refused to produce the driver of a truck who hit my client? They refused to produce him at the time of deposition. You want to know what happened? Come join me for a walk near the beach as I share with you exactly what happened. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Okay, my client was walking across the street in the crosswalk in Manhattan when she was struck by a massive dump truck and suffered significant fractures. Now, during the course of her lawsuit, she had been questioned in a process known as a deposition, where she was asked questions about what happened to her, what she observed, what she did, and importantly, what problems and injuries she suffered as a result of being hit and crushed by this particular dump truck. So now, after my client had been questioned, it was now my opportunity to go ahead and question the driver of this particular dump truck who caused and created this entire accident. I had been asking the defense attorney for weeks and months for a definite date for them to produce this particular witness so that I could now question him in this process that lawyers call a deposition. We also call it an examination before trial. It's sworn testimony that's given under oath and it would typically take place in the defense lawyer's office and a court stenographer would be there to record all of my questions and all of the witness's answers. Well, I got radio silence. Every time I called and told them I needed a definite date, uh, they said, oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. We'll get to it. We're working on it. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Well, now months had passed without getting a definite answer. Now we had to appear in court. And in court for a conference, the defense told me that they are still working on it. Now, I don't know what's going on. All I know is that I am legally entitled to question this particular witness. This is a key witness that we have sued along with the trucking company. And each and every time I tried to get somebody from the trucking company or the driver of this truck, I got total radio silence. So finally, I reached out to the court in a formal written request. I said, Judge, the defense has violated every single discovery order and has failed to produce their witness the witness that I need to question to determine why he did what he did and how he did what he did and how he neglected to do things that he should have done and why he caused this particular accident. You know what the defense said? Judge, we're working on it. So the judge gave him a little more time. Then we came back to court and I said, Judge, they still have not produced their witness. So the judge said, you know what? If you don't produce your witness within a definite period of time that I'm going to identify and give you a deadline, Now you're going to have a problem. Now, if you don't produce this witness, guess what? I'm going to prevent you and your client, Mr. Trucking Company, from testifying at the time of trial. I said, Judge, I appreciate that. That's known as a preclusion order. However, that's not strong enough because now the defendant has now violated multiple discovery orders. They have failed to produce their witness that they were supposed to do. This case has now come to a standstill, all because they are stonewalling us and not telling us what's going on and why they have not produced their witness. So now, for the very first time, the defense attorney tells the court and tells me, listen, we can't find the driver of the truck. I said, what do you mean you can't find him? He's an employee of the trucking company. Get somebody in from the trucking company. I want to question somebody who has direct responsibility for this particular witness. And now we'll get details. Where was he? Where was he less employed? What was his last address? Things of that nature. Guess what? They came back and told me they couldn't find anybody who had responsibility for this particular driver. They said that there was no witness available who could provide any such information. So what did I tell the judge? I said, Judge, this is outrageous. This is ridiculous. I want you to sanction them. I want you to fine them for failing to do what they were supposed to do. And here's something more drastic. I said, Judge, what I actually would like you to do is I want you to strike the defendant's answer. Now, what does that mean, strike the defendant's answer? In extreme circumstances, if the opposing party fails to do certain things despite various court orders to do that, The judge has the ability to turn around and drastically alter the trajectory and the outcome of the case. Now, what does that mean? It means that if the defense has violated various court orders to produce a witness that they are required to produce, and now repeatedly they have failed to do that, 
the judge is going to lose their temper in a way. The judge is basically going to say, okay, counselor, you have violated all of my orders. You have failed to respond and failed to do what you are supposed to do and produce this witness to answer questions by Mr. Ojinski. You have failed to provide any valid excuse or reason that we could then validate. And because of that, I am now going to strike your answer. Okay, so let's go back for a second. When a lawsuit gets started, it gets started by filing a document or delivering a document called a complaint. These are the allegations necessary to start a case. And in that complaint, we allege that the driver was careless, that he was negligent in operating his truck. We allege that the trucking company was also careless in hiring this guy, that they should have done more of a background check, that they failed to supervise his actions, they failed to properly train him. So there are various allegations that are made in the complaint. We then take that document and deliver it to the various people you have sued. The attorneys who then represent those people or companies then have an opportunity to respond to those allegations. And they do that in a fancy document called an answer. Now that answer will either admit the allegations or they're going to deny it in all likelihood. And that's exactly what happens. So now they raise defenses and now they claim all sorts of excuses about how and why this particular incident happened. If the judge now, at a later point, because the defense has violated all of the court orders and does not produce their witness for deposition, the judge has the ability to say, hey, defense, guess what? I am striking your answer as if you never served it and now you have no defense anymore. This is very similar to, let's say, the Mets playing the Yankees and the Yankees simply don't show up at the appointed time for the game. The Mets would get an automatic win called a default. Same exact thing happens in a lawsuit. If the defense does not show up, we, the plaintiff, the injured party, gets an automatic win. And then we go straight to damages and we have a trial on damages to determine how much money my client is to receive as a form of compensation for all of the injuries and harm that she suffered because of the defendant's negligence. So that's exactly what the judge said she would do. The judge said, listen, you have failed to provide your witnesses for deposition. You have failed to comply with this court's order multiple times. And now as a result of that, I am going to strike your answer. And they said, wait a second, judge, before you take that drastic action, give us one last chance. And the judge said, okay, because that is a drastic remedy. So in that instance, the judge gave them one last chance. And guess what? Do you think they produced their truck driver, anybody from the trucking company for deposition? The answer was, no, they didn't. So what ultimately happened? What ultimately happened is that the judge set down an order that said, if the defense refuses to produce their witnesses that they are obligated to do by this particular deadline, she is going to strike the defendant's answer. We are now going to have a default judgment, and then we're going to schedule a trial on damages. What happened after that? I'll tell you what happened. I get a call from the defense, not to tell me that they are ready to produce their witnesses, but rather that they couldn't locate this guy, they couldn't identify anybody from the trucking company, and they'd like to settle this case, which is exactly what we did. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you just to open your eyes to help you understand how these types of cases work in the state of New York. You know, I realize you're likely watching this because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York, but you have not yet started a lawsuit and still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a fantastic day.